Hey there, Gemini. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to September of 2022. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. I hope this message is finding you well. So in this video, Gemini, we are going to be looking at uh, the month of September for you from the realm of or from the view of true sidereal astrology. Now, this is mainly going to resonate the most for Gemini rising in terms of true sidereal astrology. If you are not familiar with true sidereal astrology, if this is new to you, I highly recommend that you stick around and give us a little bit of a listen here uh, that when I speak of the astrology when it comes to the signs, I definitely work with true sidereal astrology. If you have never seen your true sidereal chart and you're interested in what that looks like, I highly recommend that you shoot me an email. I would be more than happy to provide you with your true sidereal chart free of charge. If you would like to have a session with me in terms of dissecting and discussing your true sidereal chart and getting a little bit of predictions and analysts, uh, analytics or analysis, there it is analysis for you that is going to be a charged session but if you would just like a copy of your chart I would be more than pleased as punch to provide it to you for free just shoot me an email my email can be found in the description box below let me know you're interested provide me with all of your information your date of birth the time of birth and your place of birth and I will be more than happy to shoot that back to you free of charge. So we're going to get into this. Now, granted, this is going to be the most accurate for Gemini rising, at least when it comes to talking about the houses and the transits through the houses in astrology. But of course, this could still resonate for you in terms of Gemini energy. Yeah. So let's just get into this and talk about it. So um, as you guys probably know already, Mercury is going to be going retrograde this month. Officially, the Mercury, the retrograde uh, uh, motion of Mercury starts around September 9th, which is ironically just at the moment of our next full moon this month. And Mercury will be retrograde until October 1st. So we have all of September to handle and or deal with this Mercury retrograde. Okay. Now, Mercury being your ruling planet, Gemini, you guys are most likely not a stranger to dealing with these energies, and I don't necessarily feel like things are so bad for you. However, in terms of how this is moving through for you here, Gemini, it could rep or could bring up a little bit of miscommunication. Um, but also I feel that the biggest thing for you this month in terms of this Mercury retrograde is giving you an opportunity to communicate about some things or face some things that you may have been avoiding potentially. Um, or maybe um, the feeling here was if you were technically, if you were kind of looking for an opportunity to handle some things in your life that you haven't been able to handle or communicate about clearly and authentically, this Mercury retrograde could really give you an opportunity to do so. Uh, now, Mercury is going to be moving retrograde from your fourth house of um, home and family life and also nurturance back into your third house of communication vacation. Okay. Um, and the feeling that I got for you here was that, you know, things were going well, well, uh, uh, you know, smoothly for sure. But then all of a sudden it seems like things might change or, um, havoc may be, uh, maybe being wreaked in your life. You know, uh, things are running amok. Um, but it's like suddenly things take a turn for the worst, seemingly out of nowhere. But that's the thing about it, Gemini. It's not necessarily out of nowhere. I feel like either this is a situation in which you most likely may have been avoiding communicating about this topic. And the feeling that I'm getting from that is, um, especially with this being uh, an energy in your fourth house, of home and family life and also nurturance. There could be a situation, Gemini, in which maybe you were beating around the bush or maybe you felt like you had to walk on eggshells for someone or maybe someone felt like they were having to walk on eggshells for you. But this Mercury retrograde moment really does feel like it's giving you an opportunity to address this and to clear the air and once and for all, potentially, to really put that last nail in the coffin to get this situation handled and over and done with. Okay. The catch here, Gemini, is that 
that yeah see look here's what the first card that just came out for you is the ten of cups there is something about family and or community that's coming up for you um, and I, like I said earlier it kind of seems like it's coming out of nowhere but it's really not coming out of nowhere I feel like this is something that's been hiding underneath the surface for a long time and the catch here Gemini is that whatever comes up for you at this time is not random like I said this might be something you have not been paying attention to or on the other hand maybe you've been looking for an opportunity to address or fix this topic mercury retrograde is definitely going to give you an opportunity to do that okay um uh let's i do want to say that this it did feel like this might be a little bit explosive but really the, the explosiveness of this situation really just feels like it's coming from the fact that the people that it involves for you Ten of Cups here, your community around you, your family around you. These are people that you really share a deep or and or close connection with. Or at least for some of you, maybe you felt like you have had a better connection with them or a deeper connection with them. And this also may be why this kind of feels like it's coming out of nowhere. It's like some of the 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 negative aspects of these connections with these people or the less than ideal or less than you really thought it was type of connection it's coming to the surface in order for you to be to be addressed i did hear a message specifically and it was it, it was quote be prepared for a really wild or extreme ride but with that said gemini keep in mind that the more extreme the circumstances that you're dealing with in this month or over this time period the more radical the potential for healing you have okay if you can keep the focus on healing and resolving the situation for yourself and for the people that this involves the better your chances will be to be success Full in terms of healing here now the next card that came out for you as i was talking about this is the seven of swords there really is some sort of deception going on here with the with your community or with your family or the people that you love the most or feel like you should be able to have this really deep connection with there really could be a situation coming to the surface where this connection wasn't as deep or maybe wasn't as reciprocal as you really thought or as the people around you some of the people that you're dealing with as they really thought but like i said gemini this is giving you an opportunity to address this situation at the bottom of the deck i was guided to look at the bottom of the deck right now you do have the king of pentacles this could very well be with your father or maybe a father figure but also the energy or the understanding that I'm getting from this King of Pentacles energy is you being solid in yourself. And being solid in yourself, in yourself means being able to stand up for yourself or step up, having that solidity within yourself to be able to speak your truth regardless as to whatever others have to say about it. And really specifically here, Gemini, if you find in this situation that the people around you are not honoring you well enough to allow you to really speak your truth well then that tells you something doesn't it either you can take this opportunity to really heal this situation or maybe this is a moment for you to realize that you got to stay solid within yourself and move on if it's necessary yeah let's switch gear well not switch gears but let's switch the view here i want to show you the chart so here you go. This is the view of the chart for you for the month of September of 2022. Now, here are the things that we were talking about. Um, if you look, oh, wait, oops. <laughs> wait, this isn't actually the proper chart. Hold on. Let me fix this. Let me fix this. Let me fix this. And boop. Okay, there we go. This is the proper chart for you here. Now, as you can see, you have Mercury, which is right down here. Mercury is starting the month in your first, in your fourth house, excuse me. This is as of the 1st of September. And Mercury is going to be going retrograde for you. And with that retrograde motion, Mercury is going to be moving backwards from your fourth house into your third house. Now, Mercury is in the constellation of Virgo, which is very much about being of service or healing and um 
and perfecting a situation for you or perfecting your life. Um, also, uh, your routines, right? Okay. Now with, uh, Mercury moving retrograde, it is not, Mercury is not going to move back into Leo. Mercury is going to stay in Virgo, but for you, Gemini, let's move forward a little bit. Uh, September 9th is when, as you can see here, Mercury starts to station retrograde and then moves backwards into back through your fourth house back into your third house. So this is where I love to say that Mercury retrograde is a time to really rework that programming. If there is any sort of programming, any sort of habits and or routines, Virgo energy, you have the opportunity to address that, assess that and rewrite that programming. Okay. Now, Mercury is going to be moving back from your fourth house into your third house. And I really do feel like, Gemini, this is going to give you an opportunity to really start to communicate about things effectively. Now, let's um, talk about this. This is... I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So I want to actually go backwards. That was the 14th of September that we were looking at right then and there, but I want to go back to around the full moon. So the full moon is here. The sun is in Leo in your third house. Um, and the moon is going to be at its peak during this full moon. The moon is going to be in Aquarius. And I definitely feel like for the collective, this is a full moon that's bringing out some things that are, are personal to you, um, forms of experience. It's giving you the opportunity to bring that out of yourself, to communicate it with the people around you. Aquarius is very much an energy of the people around you, your friends, um, your wishes and your desires as the, uh, uh, Aquarius does rule the 11th house, okay? But Aquarius is an energy that really seeks or is driven to find a balance and a sense of harmony for all. All. It's a very revolutionary energy in terms of that. So Gemini, with this being in Aqu this full moon being in Aquarius in your ninth house, no less. The ninth house being the house of expansion. It is ruled by Sagittarius. So there's higher learning, um, stepping out of your comfort zone, whether you're traveling out of your town, out of your state, or maybe even out of the country. Okay, and higher learning, higher awareness, seeing the bigger picture, and all kinds of things. With this ninth house Aquarius energy and the full moon, I feel like this is really providing you with an opportunity to be able to draw these things out from within you so that you can express them and communicate with the people around you, all right? Now, the sun being in your third house of communication throughout the month, it really is illuminating ways that you could communicate better or is opening that doorway of communication for people. Obviously, well, maybe if you don't know, you, Gemini, do are the ruler of the third house, okay? So this is a very comfortable, I feel like, uh, energy for you here, all right? Now, the other thing that I really feel is influencing this is Mars. Mars is moving through Taurus. Mars, Mars is going to be transiting through Taurus until the end of March of 2023. But for you, Gemini, Mars is moving through Taurus in your 12th house. The 12th house is the house of the collective, is the house where you kind of lose a sense of yourself, where you can kind of be, feel like you're being deconstructed from that individuality back into that of the collective here. But with Mars moving through Taurus, number one, it gives you the opportunity to be really tenacious and to really have that 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 follow through that drive to really see something through but mars and taurus can make it a little bit of a me 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 energy you have to be very careful about that not to really step on any toes or not to get uh, not to allow your sense of drive what it is you want to create and build and develop in your life not to get so focused on, and, and, and one-sided that you're forgetting about the rest of the people around you and how it may be affecting the people around you. But with Mars moving through Taurus in your 12th house, this is act absolutely accentuating this energy of the collective. But for, for you, Gemini, I feel like this is actually a good thing. 
whether you want to see it or not, depending on how extreme this circumstance is for you. Um, I do feel like Mars moving through Taurus in your 12th house is giving you that opportunity to really start to define yourself outside of the collective. I really do feel like this is influencing you to really take steps to to, to better yourself or to, to speak up for yourself or allowing you the opportunity to communicate about the things that are not necessarily working so well for you if you do feel like you're getting kind of lost in the collective sauce, okay? Now, the sun is going to continue throughout the month, continue transiting in your third house. By the end of the month here, as you can see, and also by the time we reach the new moon, which is at the end of the of September, the sun will be moving back, have moved back in, well, I'm sorry, have moved into your fourth house effectively taking that self-focus away from communication and now towards a greater sense of nurturance. And with this new moon here, it also incorporating a, a stellium, as you can see, between the sun, the moon, Mercury and Venus. For the collective, I feel like this stellium, including Venus, in terms of whatever Mercury retrograde is bringing up for you and whatever that opportunity is for you to re-communicate, to communicate better or to rewrite that programming, I definitely feel like Venus being involved here is giving you uh, an, injection, an injection of fertilizer to really help you make a really beautiful situation out of something kind of icky, yes? Now with this new moon, a new moon is a great time to clear out energies and start afresh. It's a great time to wipe that slate clean. If you really take this opportunity, Gemini, to communicate about the things that are bothering you or to allow the people around you, your friends, your family, your community to communicate with you about what it is they truly need. I feel like by the time we reach the new moon here, you will really be able to wipe that slate clean and really fix or heal the situations for you, okay? This could be a really beautiful energy for you, but I do feel like there may be a little bit of a sense of dread here in terms of this, but don't worry, don't fear. Whatever comes up for you during this time is really giving you the opportunity to heal and grow. See, there you go. At the bottom of the deck now, you do have the three of pentacles, which is an energy of self-mastery, but is also an energy of teamwork okay gemini you really have to allow yourself to be a team player but also understand that if others are not necessarily being team players with you there there's really no need or no reason for you to force this connection to stand and i understand that's going to be a little bit difficult especially if you thought that this connection that you had with these people or maybe this one person was better more beneficial, more balanced, more equal than you initially thought. I understand that if you do find yourself having to walk away or separate from this connection, there is going to be a grieving process, but all connections, all relationships, Gemini, are a two-way street. And if you're really finding that you cannot effectively work with these people or these people or this person is not trying to work with you, your best option is for you, Emperor, to make the executive to say, decision to say, I don't have to stay here. I don't want to stay here. I'm not going to stay here. Remember, Gemini, that you are the master of your own domain. You are the CEO of your life. You get to call the shots, not the people around you, okay? All right, Gemini, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really, truly hope this was helpful for you. Please make sure to smash that like button for me if you enjoyed this reading. Leave me a comment in the comment section lo down below letting me know how this resonated for you and definitely it letting me know if you want to see more of this. I would love to hear that from you. If you would like to get a personal reading with me, I am available for that, especially true sidereal chart, natal chart readings. Hit me up. My email can be found in the description box below. Shoot me an email letting me know you're interested and I'd be more than pleased as punch to set up a session for you and if you would like a, a copy of your true sidereal chart then definitely hit me up I would be more than pleased as punch to provide that to you free of charge yes I hope you have a fantastic month it's been so wonderful connecting with you and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very very soon yes excellent bye <laughs>